Rocket rolls on. We will see Ronnie O'Sullivan in action again here at the Rico tonight after he made it into the group final with a 4-2 win over Stuart Bingham. Neil Foles, Stephen Hendry, a thoroughly entertaining match that had a bit of everything. Fascinating yeah. final frame as well, which lasted about a third of the length of the entire <laughs> match, Neil. Yeah, it wasn't really in keeping with, with what we saw, you know, because Stuart nearly pulled off what was probably the impossible by getting all those snookers. But aside from all that, you know, Ronnie played pretty well in the end. A few sort of scary moments, Stephen, were they not, where he didn't look like he was on all cylinders at the beginning. First, first frame and a half, he looked, Ronnie looked like he hadn't played snooker for two or three weeks. <laughs> he looked really, he was playing the kind of shots that you wouldn't associate with Ronnie. Bad positional, pots missed by a mile. Um, but, you know, as we're going to see, Stuart Bingham had a chance in the second frame, let him off the hook away, but and from then on, I mean, he just, he, he did what yeah. Ronnie does, the two centuries in, in about 10 minutes. <laughs> put, sorry, put paid to the match. Let's take a look back at how he won this <laughs> one then. He's as devastating as ever, but I mean, it, it did, as, I mean, he's missed this by an absolute mile. Mm. And I think he was even surprised by that. I think you thought the next shot was key, wasn't it, from Bingham? Well, Bingham's won the first frame. He gets, if, if he pots this red, he's on the black, he's got a chance to go 2-0 up. The whole concept of the match could, could change. He's missed that. Ron, this is not an easy shot by any stretch. Is it in a blind pocket? Okay, he's not leaving much. But, um, but from then on, you know, Ronnie goes in and makes two centres in the next two frames. And from could have been 2-0 up. Stuart Bingham is 2-1 behind. This was clever, you know, I mean, I don't know quite what he played. I mean, he's got, the, the red doesn't go in many pockets and he's managed to slither it past the, the green and, and it goes to the right middle. It, you know, he, he's a, a magnificent shot maker, you know, not orthodox shots. This was what Bingham was left with from the break of a horrible shot, really, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. You're, you're, you're kind of forced into playing the positive shot for the black. He knows the cue ball's going into the bunch. This is a lovely pot into the middle pocket. You know, from, from under the cushion, those shots are not easy, but it's made to look easy there. Yeah, and this made back-to-back -back centuries. It, this is, you know, he is a devastating break builder, and he, he's no different now to the day he turned professional. As it, age has not changed that, you know, he's got everything when it comes to scoring. I mean, here, you think that he's just going to go on and on from this. I, we like this shot, just playing on the single red. It was quite a shot, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the table, again, looks to be playing absolutely beautifully. I mean, you can get that grip on the cue ball to, 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 you know, to get the action on it, to, to miss the black. This was unlucky. Foul. He played the shot perfectly, really, but didn't see the red was going to go in. Um, could have cost him the frame. Yeah, I, mean, I think he was a bit unlucky there. Here, he can tie the frame. He's played to roll it in. He wouldn't play a shot at that speed, that length of the table. It must have rolled off, actually. Yeah, yeah definitely. He's never going to miss the red um, completely. So, yeah, something for the table fitters to have a, a look at, maybe. He was just derailed a bit in that fourth frame because he looked brilliant, but he comes out again roaring. Great long pot. You know, he was really attacking in the whole match. And he, in the end, he looked really good. And this is just lovely to watch, isn't it's, it? This, this is so, they controlled that so well. It's so easy to overhit that or underhit that, but it was just perfection. You know, and here, even then, he didn't have to play this shot. He seems to be quite attacking. As he's got older, he's almost become more attacking as a player than maybe he was certainly 10 years ago. He was aggressive the whole match, but the one thing we did see through Ronnie in this particular this last frame, frame was the patience he's got. Well, yeah, I mean, th these two shots now, that blue and the next one, this was such a good shot, wasn't it? It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, his cue ball control is, is, is the best uh, of anyone playing snooker. I mean, those two blues were just perfection. I mean, it, it, this red is such a tough shot, but he's put the cue ball in a place where you know, he's going to pot it probably eight times out of ten. Mm. And whether the pockets are big or not, that, that red went in perfectly. It was a really good match, you know. Bingham, I thought, played a big part in it, but Ronnie deserved to win. He played, he scored, he was deadly in amongst them. Mm. And, of course, the match can turn on a sixpence with Ronnie because he goes at such a pace. If he gets a, if he gets mm. a head of steam up, he's difficult to keep on to his coattails. It, it just shows you that, as I say, go back to that shot that Stuart Bingham missed in the second frame. You've got to keep on top of Ronnie. If you let him get up a head of steam, that, you know, he's, he's going to steamroll you. I mean, obviously, the, the 4 2 is, is closer than perhaps it, it, it should have been, but if Bingham goes 2 0 up, he's got a chance to win the match. A word on John Higgins' Ryan Day coming up very shortly, Neil. Very interesting game. Ryan Day's beaten him this season. John Higgins is the one player that, that Ronnie respects more than anybody in the game, I would say.
is that going to be the, the outcome then tonight? We're going to see John Higgins in the final with, with I, Ronnie. I think most snooker fans would love to see that as a final. Obviously, you know, Ryan Day's in there with, with a great shout, but I think that's what you would love to see. It'd be a tremendous final, the group. OK, don't go away. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll bring you the second match of the afternoon. It's the Wizard of Wishaw taking on Ryan Dynamite Day.